Welcome back to Bill's Workbench and Bag C, or Part 4, of this Orlando Hunter build. Whew! It's been a long one. I hope uh, you've been enjoying it. If you are, please leave a comment. Uh, let me know what other kinds of builds you're interested in learning about. But let's get started on Bag C. The last time I built an Orlando Hunter on bag C. The difficult part was this part right here of the drive shaft connecting the U-bolt in. That was the most difficult part because it's fiddly and it's very small and it's fragile. So you got to be careful there. Uh, everything else is pretty straightforward. Let's get uh, started building the transmission. So with the transmission we're not going to need these parts here or these parts. We need the transmission, we're going to need the gear or the bearings, and we're going to need some screws as well as our motor. I've got my Phillips screwdriver, I've got my 0.9 millimeter hex or Allen or whatever you want to call it. I've got some grease to put on the gears. This is a pretty light grease. This is a light used truck. I'm finding that RCs are pretty light use anyway so this this uh, grease works quite well and I've got my tweezers here we go so they want us to do a lot of different things we probably want to do the motor first because as we look at the connections here these screws will probably get covered up by that gear right there so we'll do the motor first and then we'll do the gear, the bearing, that gear, the bearing, and then put it all together, as well as that grub screw right there. I have found that getting the Orlando Hunter motor is the way to go, even though you can find these hunters a dime a dozen on Amazon, Banggood, and AliExpress. The reason is, is the shaft here is shorter, and the connection to connect it to the electronic speed control is correct. Uh, as far as the connector here. If you have these connectors and find a shorter shaft one, then all, by all means, go for that. I'm going to lube this up a little bit here with this light grease. All right, let's get that back in there now. motor in it doesn't matter which orientation it's in as long as it's facing forward you want to try to push it up as far as you can you don't want to rely on the screws pulling it forward because it's going to just wreck the plastic Attach the Allen to the grub screw. Get that. Oops. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. grub screw is binding against the against the screws on there so before I get too excited let's see how the, it meshes up before I start changing a bunch of things so we get that bearing in place that doesn't matter which way it goes it could come out just a little bit all right, so that's what we're going to do. I'll grab the correct screwdriver. Move it too far. Oh, well, that'll be all right. Now it's clearing the screws that are holding the motor in place. Okay. 
Okay. Put this in here like that. Put more grease. It's good. Put this piece on here like sit. Well, we gotta put that bearing in first. And we can put this piece in. There we go. It's still free. Put it in. Alright, so we got some screws to put in there. We got some 1205s. Well, all fives are here. How many do I have? I have four of them. So if you're having a hard time trying to get that screw to go in and stay on your end of your screwdriver it's most likely you got too big of a screwdriver which one is this you're asking this is a p0 after you get all those in check it make sure it's still running free which it is all right that can be set aside this is the next piece. This piece is particular in that you should use the Allen that came with the kit. All right, next we're gonna put the ball screws onto this piece right here. This is the piece that the suspension connects to. This is particular because there are four of these, which are these inside ones. Those are the ones we're going to be putting in first. And those require the Allen key that comes with the kit. So how many of these do we have? We have eight. One, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, precious. Okay, so here's how you do this. I have seen one guy online who gets these hot and puts them in. That is indeed one way to do it. I haven't done it that way. I'm afraid to do it that way. So I'm going to do it this way. You have to be very careful with this because this piece cracks. They do sell an aluminum version of this plastic piece here that is worth the upgrade in my opinion because of the cracking issue. I have that in as far as I think it should go. In fact, I have even a better idea. I'm going to undo this one now. Why you ask? because this side now has the threads cut in it. So now I can take this out and put this over this way and put this back on and then thread this one in. Now the other one will thread in more easily. -er. It is a word now. So I'll move it out to my 
times root plus. Yes, that was the way to do it. So I put the one in, get it threaded, put the other, take it out, put it in on the other side, and then that goes in nicely. Okay, fantastic. Now I don't need this later. All right, we got four more to do. And those are these right here. One, two, three, four. Okay, there's that piece. Now that piece goes onto the bottom of the transmission. Seems the transmission is sitting like this in the diagram above. And then this goes on underneath like that. Voila. And it's held in by two screws, and these are 1505s. So two 1505s. Okay. Spinning free. Yay, transmission is done. Motor and transmission done. Yay, yay, yay. Now let's get to the shocks. The shocks, these are not oil-filled shocks. I don't know if putting a lightweight grease in here is going to make a difference, but I'm going to try it because I'm living on the edge today. I'll let you know if it makes a difference. So, we need shock parts. These are the shocks. This is the tree the shocks sit on. These rings are to adjust your right height. They have nothing to do with the spring, spring tension. So we'll get enough for one shock out. I'm going to clean up the ends after I get this thing built. And I'm not going to worry about the right height adjustments yet. I'm going to need my shock bag, which is here. I'm going to need the screw or the shaft and one of the springs. There is a spring. There is the shaft. The shaft does not have a Phillips screw or anything on the end. It is what it is. I don't think grease is going to make any difference, but I'm going to add just a little tiny bit in here. Not much, just a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, it didn't make a difference at all. Don't even worry about it. Okay, these are going to require that I pinch them. So I'm going to use these right here, even though it doesn't make a hill of beans difference. Because there's no O-rings on here. I could use any pliers I want. The spring goes on like this. Oh, but first I gotta get the screw, the 1005. 1005. Am I? Oh, it just slides right in. Never mind. Okay. So there's this. It goes like that. This goes on here like this. And you compress the spring 
without compressing the shock. Grab it like that so the spring is in between your fingers there. No. I've got a little thing about it that I want to get rid of. That's from the, it being on the tree. better. I'll look to see if the holes look any bigger or smaller. That looks a little smaller, so I'm going to go this way. And then this way, like that. You can see the paper through there. on the screw with my other hand. Okay, a little bit of the screw pops out at the end. That's normal. There we go. We have one large shock. All right, I'm going to do that uh, three more times. Okay, four shocks. Four shocks done. Yay. Shocks. Now the drive shafts. The drive shafts are finicky. Probably the most finicky part of the whole build. If you thought this build was finicky before, you haven't done the drive shafts yet. Be very careful in trimming off the ends here. Okay, on the ends, they want us to use number fives on both ends. So these are the number fives. I'm thinking the number fours might be better, but we'll go with the number fives. The reason I'm thinking the number fours might be better is I want to add a spacer into the piece that goes into the axle. Because its pinion goes in further on the axle. As the pinion gets pushed in, it starts to bind. It likes to be out a little bit. So we'll see how it goes. We can always switch it. I'm gonna put I'm gonna do the larger drive shaft first. The actual shaft part instead of the connector. And get that done first. Then put it in so it's like that. Push it down with your finger now. Voila, drive shafts are done. Oh. So, let's see. Are we done? Are we done? We are done with this bag. I have another bag to do, and i got to spray paint the body. So we can all get that done. So, in this bag, we put together the transmission, which is right here. We put together the four shocks, which are right here. And we put together the two drive shafts, which are right there. So there you go. That's what we did in this exciting, action-packed episode of Bill's Workbench. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll join you. We'll uh, see you on the next one for Bag D, as in David, which is the body, which has a bunch of stuff in it. Oh, my goodness gracious. Lots. Oh, it's the last. Oh, no, bag E is the last one. You thought we were done. But bag D will do the body, and we will attach the axles, drive shaft, and transmission to the buggy. And then in bag E, we will make the wheels and get them attached and um, check all of our settings, make sure we're in good shape. And then we'll have a rolling chassis ready for the radio. We we'll want to figure out where we want to put the radio and the battery for this great model. 
All right.